My name is Delyn Osborne. I am a reading teacher from Wichita, Kansas. Today, I will show you how I teach beginning, middle, and ending sounds to early childhood students. One of the first things that students need to know how to do is to separate words into individual sounds in order to be able to read words when they are combined. This will be done whole group. Let's take a look at beginning sounds. Listen for the beginning sound in the word dog. I hear d, a, g. I use my fingers to represent the sounds as a visual for students to associate the different sound placements. The first sound that I hear in the word is d, d is the first sound in dog. I would then have students do another example with me. Now say the word cat. As I say the sounds, I do it on my fingers. The sounds in cat are k, a, t. Students say the sounds with me and do it on their fingers. Do the sounds with me. At. Then I ask again, what was the beginning or first sound we heard in the word cat? When asking the last question, I would point to the finger representing that sound. Students should respond with k. We would do this together with several words until the students have learned how to name the beginning sound. I would do a whole lesson with beginning sounds then in another lesson, I'll use the same technique for ending sounds. I would say, let's look at the word bat. Say bat. What are the sounds we hear in bat? And the students would say, b, a, t. Then I would ask, what is the last sound we hear in bat? And I would point to the finger representing that sound. Last, we do a lesson focused on middle sounds. Middle sounds can be the hardest for students to recognize, but I use the same process to teach them. I would say, say bug. What are the sounds we hear in bug? And the students answer, b, a, g, and use their fingers to represent the sounds. As I point to the finger representing the middle sound, I would ask, what is the sound that we heard in the middle? And the students would respond with, uh. If the students did not remember the sound, then I would go back and review the sounds again before telling them that the sound is, uh. So I would focus on each kind of sound placement in a different lesson with multiple chances to practice a skill in the lesson. The visual of the fingers helps students to see the placement of the sounds. Eventually, they will be able to visualize the sounds in their heads to make them into words. This skill of visualizing the placement of sounds will help them to write the words. So that is how I teach beginning, middle, and ending sounds to early childhood students.